Good day everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play the Risk board game with two players. Now there's two different ways you can do this. Uh, one is called the active neutral way and the other one is called the passive neutral way. So the first thing you're going to do is each uh, player is going to go ahead and choose a different colored army. Uh, so for the players I'm going to go ahead and use red and green and then the neutral armies are going to be the other four colors. So in this case they'll be gray, blue, white, and then yellow. So those will be the four neutral colors. Now the first thing each player is going to do is they're going to pick 36 uh, units and uh, put them in their hand. And there's a couple of different types here. Um, you've got the little infantry man over here which is one unit. Um, you have the cavalry unit there which is five units. And then you have the cannon here, which is 10 units. Uh, now, I have a later edition of this game, so other games may have different looking pieces. But they're all going to have the 1, and then the 5, and then the 10. So you'll go ahead and uh, pick up 36 units, in this case single units. And then for each of the neutrals, you're going to give them 24 units. So I'll go ahead and uh, get those units ready. Okay, so I've got all the units separated here. Uh, here's green, here's red, and all of the neutral armies are going to be in there. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and deal out these risk cards. Um, you're going to go ahead and take out the wilds and put them aside. And then you're going to go ahead and deal nine cards to each of the players and then six cards for each of the neutrals. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so here are the cards. Uh, this is going to be green, this is going to be red, and these are going to represent uh, each of the colors of the neutrals. Uh, so then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up your cards and you're going to see what countries that you have. Uh, so green in this case has Ural and uh, Siam, uh, Japan, Egypt, countries like that. And uh, what each player is going to do is they're going to look at their cards and they're going to place one unit on each of these countries. And then they're going to look at the neutrals and they're going to do the same for that. So I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, the game uh, via these cards over here. Okay, so now as you can see I've gone ahead and I've placed uh, one army uh, for all of the neutrals and for player one and player two. Okay, so the next thing that's going to happen is the players are going to roll the dice and whoever gets the highest number is going to get to uh, place more of their units on the countries that they already own. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to go ahead and place three units and then they're going to place one neutral of whatever color that they want. And typically what you want to do with the neutrals is you're going to want to try to reinforce lands that are close to lands that you own. Uh, so let's just say green goes ahead and he wins. So he decides he's going to place an army man over here an army man over here and another army man over here and then as far as the neutrals let's just say he decides he's going to pick a yellow and he's going to pick uh, right over here and so the next player who is red is going to go and he's going to get to do the same thing Okay, so now all the armies have been set up, and I'm just going to talk about a couple of things before I show you the gameplay. At the beginning of your turn, you're going to go ahead and count the territories that you own, and uh, depending on how many territories that you own, you're going to receive uh, some armies to place on the board at the beginning of your turn. So in the beginning of this turn, everybody is going to start off with nine. So what you'll do is you'll divide that by three, and then at the beginning of the next turn, you will get three armies to place on whatever uh, countries that you particularly own. And uh, every single time that the number goes up, you're going to get more armies. Uh, now you'll also get reinforcements at the beginning of your turn if you happen to uh, control an entire continent. So if Green, for example, uh, owned all of North America, uh, at the beginning of his uh, subsequent turns, he would receive uh, five additional armies along with the uh, armies that I had just talked about. Um, also, you can get extra armies by using these cards over here. If you happen to win at least one battle on your turn, you're going to receive one of these cards. Uh, if you receive three cards of the same symbol like this, uh, three men, or three cavalry, or three of the cannons, you'll be able to trade in those three cards, and then you'll be able to get the amount of uh, armies that is right here. Uh, the first person to turn in three cards is going to receive four armies. The second will get six eight, etc. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, turn in one cannon, one cavalry, and then uh, and one soldier as well. You'll be able to turn in three of the different cards uh, to be able to get those armies. And there's also the two wild cards. This is a wild card. You'll be able to use the wild card for any of these symbols when you turn in your cards. And if you end up getting five cards in your hand, you're going to have to go ahead and trade them in on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about battling. Um, after all of your units have been placed, the first player is going to go ahead and uh, set off an attack. And what he's going to do, let's just say it's Green's turn, he wants to go ahead and attack. He's going to choose which army that he wants to attack. Now, the neutral armies do not attack, but they will defend. So, 
uh, green player and red player who I'm uh, playing with will be able to attack those armies. And the main uh, point of that is so that they can try to get some more land. Now, this is with the passive version. With the active version, you'll be actually able to bribe the neutral armies. And I'll talk about that soon. Anyway, let's say uh, green decides he's going to go ahead and attack yellow. Uh, now, one thing you'll also note is uh, that some of these countries have more than five units in there. If you want, you can use that little cavalry piece that I showed you uh, to re represent five units. And if you have ten units, you can use the big cannon piece that I showed you. But you don't have to do that. Uh, so let's just say green decides he's going to go ahead and attack yellow. Now, green can go ahead and roll up to three dice if he so chooses, and this is going to represent three of his units. Yellow, in this case, uh, will have to be able to roll up to two dice. Now, if green, for some reason, got down to two units, he's not going to be able to uh, roll three dice. He's only going to be able to roll two. And the same with um, the, red, the defending player. Uh, now, green is going to have to keep one player... Uh, in his territory. So let's just go ahead and say uh, that he rolls and he rolls this and uh, the defender rolls this. What you're going to do is you're going to uh, take the highest number of each of the dice and compare them. And in this case uh, the attacker uh, won both of these and uh, this die since there was no defense or and no defending die it's not going to do anything. But he did kill off two of yellow's units. So yellow is going to go ahead and take off two of the units like so. And so let's just say green decides to go again. Now, uh, yellow is, is going to go ahead and roll his two, and green will go ahead and roll three again. And then this time, uh, looks like uh, the defender did really well. Uh, the defender is going to win all ties. So in this case, uh, the defender won two, and so now green is going to have to take two armies off himself. Now, if green wants to stop attacking and go to attack somebody else, he will be able to do so. But let's say green decides he's going to go ahead and attack India. And uh, now India is a neutral army. So green rolls, and let's just say he rolls something like this. And then uh, let's just say India rolls something like this. Uh, green beat India both times, so now India is gone. The two armies are there. Now uh, the armies will be able to move into here. Now I read in uh, certain rules that you have to move a certain amount of men in if you win a territory. My rule book does not say that. It just simply says that you can move in as many as you want so long as there is one person left. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move, let's just say I go ahead and move three of them in here. You can keep on going if he decides to, but let's just say Green says, okay, I'm done attacking. And uh, so what's going to happen is since he won a battle, he's going to go ahead and pick up a card and he's going to put it into his hand. And then it is going to be Red's turn. And, uh, and also, uh, you'll see these lines over here. Uh, you can attack overseas. Um, say Brazil can attack North Africa because of this line. And there's also a line over here on Alaska all the way over to the other end over there in that land. You can attack that. Uh, there's lines here. You can attack different countries uh, in the seas here as well. And, of course, the uh, armies will be able to reinforce their lands at the end of their turn. So let's just say uh, it was Red's, the end of Red's turn, and he wanted to reinforce the land. Let's just say he did something like that. Now we'll go ahead and move to the active neutrals game. Uh, now there's a couple extra steps that uh, happen when you uh, do this version, so I'll go ahead and just go over them really quick. The first one is what is called bribe the neutrals. Now the way you do this is you're going to set four cannons into each of the neutrals colors right over here. What you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to bribe them by uh, playing a card of a country that they own. So let's just say Red decided he was going to play this card, the Western United States. So what he would do is he just put that card down and the Western United States is owned by the White Army. So what he would do is he was going to go ahead and place this cannon on his side of the board. Let's just say Red over is over here. Now, the white army is allied with him. Now, um, he can play more than one card if he would like to. Let's just say he wanted to go ahead and play Great Britain as well. Great Britain is yellow, so now he will also go ahead and grab this, and Great Britain will now be his ally. Now, let's say the next player on his turn plays Madagascar. Madagascar is a yellow country, so what's going to happen is yellow will be moved back into uh, the neutral position over here. So the first thing that you're going to do on your turn is bribe the allies. Now another thing you can do is you can play two cards of uh, uh, the same color uh, that a uh, neutral owns in order to get them from your opponent's side to yours. Uh, so let's just say uh, Red decided he was going to play two countries owned by Gray. So that would go one and then two and then he would go and be allied with him. Now once there has been five cards played with a neutral, meaning five different country cards, that unit is no longer going to be able to be bribed. So whichever player has that neutral unit on his sides, 
at five cards is going to basically be allied with him for the rest of the game. So after the neutrals have been bribed, the next thing is going to happen is you're going to go ahead and receive your reinforcements. And what you'll do again is you'll go ahead and count the amount of countries that you own, and you'll divide that by three, and then you will receive that many uh, units to place on the board. And of course, you'll go ahead and count any continents that you own as well. Um, and the third thing you're going to do is you're going to reinforce your allies. Now, as you can see, let's just say red had white and gray for their allies. So what's going to happen is uh, red is going to go ahead and roll one die and place that many units into the allies' territories. So let's just say I rolled a two. So I would go ahead and let's just say I placed the two whites over here. And I would do the same with gray. Uh, with gray, let's just say I rolled and I rolled a six. Uh, so I would go ahead and be able to place six of the gray armies on any country that is owned by gray. I could do six all on one or split them up however I would like to. And after that, you're going to go ahead and do combat uh, like I had talked about. And then the next thing you'll do is you'll fortify your allies, which is step five. Um, it's the same way that you would do it at the end of your turn uh, after you had attacked and decided not to. You, you can do the same thing with your allies. Let's just say I had yellow over here. I could go ahead and uh, move him here. I would go ahead and collect a territory card if I had uh, won any battles. So anyway, that's basically the way a two-player game works, and you'll just keep uh, on playing this game until uh, one person has completely dominated the world or whatever um, rules that you have set for the game to end. And that is how you play two-player Risk.